follow you because of their own emotions, because of who they are, what they want, or who they want to be. This is why brand management has become a career, to help shape a person's online persona into an image that people want to pursue. This is also why influencer marketing has become so successful. Advertising is basically selling happiness. An entrepreneur named Dan Locke explained that people don't buy because of logic, they buy because of emotion, and then they justify it with logic. Companies will get an everyday person to promote their products, and it doesn't matter how the quality is or who they are as a person, as long as they appear happy, attractive, or successful. Consumers will purchase that product because emotionally they want to feel happy. So logically, that's what they'll achieve if they have that same item. When this happens, you're experiencing something called the halo effect. A positive impression of a person or brand causes consumers to associate a positive connotation to a product. Over the past few years, my clients have asked me to Photoshop thousands of photos. Because photo manipulation is an immensely large component in creating this ideal image that companies look for. Realistically, no one is that perfect or happy all the time. But social media has become a platform where what we present to others is more important than how we feel and who we are. It's gotten to the point where we not only manipulate photos, but simultaneously manipulate how we see the real world. And it makes you wonder, is there a limit to what technology can change in our perception of reality? Three years ago, videos of South Dakota storms started going viral online. And they're beautiful. But at the bottom there, it says 1.3 million likes, 168,000 comments, 2.2 million shares, and 85 million views. What people didn't know was that this video is actually created by my friend Jonathan Westrom. And the videos are real. They're cinemagraphs. Now, a cinemagraph is made from a still photograph. You start by taking this photo by Marco Korosek, and you define the points you want to stabilize, and then the points you want to put in motion to turn a photo into a video. And after you define your points, you boost the color, set it in motion, and then lastly, add some sound. And I remember we were enjoying this moment because 100,000 people were sitting at home watching a two-second video go on loop just because it had the word live in the top corner. Now that video took me three minutes to recreate to show here today. So imagine what's possible with today's technology when people have hours, days, or even teams of people. Now it's not fair to say that advertisers are solely responsible for shaping such a deceptive industry, because businesses also play a large role in the contracts that they draw up. If you go onto any of the campaign websites, a typical deal would look something like this. We'll send you the item and pay you $5,000 for a product mention in a multi-brand video where we're showing lots of products or $10,000 for a dedicated product video showing only our brand. Also, we'll give you a 10% off affiliate code for anyone who purchases our product through your video and we'll give you some commission. Sounds pretty reasonable. But then businesses love to treat contracts like ordering a McDonald's meal with options and add-ons. We'll pay $20,000 if you say you bought this item yourself and say it wasn't sponsored. $30,000 if you compare it to our competitor's product and say ours is better. $40,000 if you make a dedicated video on why our competitor's product is bad. Now, that doesn't seem right. Isn't it illegal? Well, yes, the Canadian Code of Advertising Standards, set by Advertising Standards Canada, has laws stating that advertisers must disclose any material connection between entity providing product or service and the endorser. But there are loopholes. A common strategy in social media marketing is negative marketing. If you're in a niche industry and you're neck and neck with a competitor's product, you can pay someone to talk badly about the competitor so more people will buy your product even though you aren't directly promoting it. This is possible because there's no contract, connection, or payment between the influencer and your competitor. As long as the influencer is not endorsing your product, they don't have to disclose that the negative review for the competitor is sponsored by you. Another common practice is comparative advertising, which is a marketing strategy in which a company's product or service is presented as superior when compared to a competitor's. If there's 10 positives and 3 negatives about the competitor, and your product has 3 positives and 10 negatives, you can request that advertisers only say the 3 positives about your product and only the 3 negatives about the competitor. So the review looks a little more something like this. And that's legal. The Competition Act set by the government of Canada says advertisements can't make a representation that is false or misleading. But since consumer experiences are so subjective, it's hard to prove that an influencer is making a misleading representation in their review. As long as the negative points they're saying about the competitor are true, there's no hard evidence of a misleading statement and therefore it's legal. So if you can't trust anyone online, who can you trust? Surely if a brand name is popular, then it must be credible. But you still have to be careful about that. The Canadian Code of Advertising Standards states that no advertisement shall be presented in a format or style that conceals the fact that it's an advertisement. However, a company 
you can send someone a watch. And the watch can be displayed in all their photos and videos, but as long as they never mention the item or brand, then the photo or video is not promotional in nature of a specific product or service. Therefore, they don't need to disclose any financial ties by saying that it was sponsored. This is called indirect product exposure. It's an effective strategy in marketing because of a psychological phenomenon called the mirror exposure effect. It's a theory that people tend to develop a preference for something merely because they are familiar with it. So the more people that company sends a watch to, the more consumers become familiar with the name and are more inclined to purchase it. You would think that companies would go in debt from product costs by sending out so many free items with no guaranteed return. But surprisingly, they can actually make a profit. There's a very successful company that manufactures watches for $7. And due to the mere exposure effect, they are continuously able to sell it at a retail price of $250. And consumers purchase it because mentally they associate that as a quality product solely due to its popularity. And it's this concept of association that has driven this industry to be a success. We trust people more than businesses because we view them as consumers just like us. But when there are financial ties involved, whose side are they really on? Can we really trust what they say? And can you really trust what I'm saying right now? My main specialization has always been photo editing and graphic design, partially because it's what I enjoy the most, but mainly because integrity and business ethics are very important to me. I help with strategy and sponsorships when my clients request it from me. However, I never directly promoted those services due to the frequency of the aforementioned practices. But I realized that even by sticking to photography and digital media, I was still contributing to this internet web of lies. In a study done by the Huffington Post, 60% of people using social media reported that it has impacted their self-esteem in a negative way. And I contributed to that deprecation by creating unrealistic standards when I was photoshopping perfect lives and perfect people. How can we compare the way we look to someone who doesn't even look like themselves? When I was working in New York, 90% of the clients I worked with asked for major body changes, but it didn't become personal until people that I knew started asking me to edit for them. I remember one friend who wanted me to slim down his sister's arms in a family photo because she was self-conscious about her body. I saw a beautiful girl, and it made me really upset that she didn't see what I was seeing. Confidence and body positivity are such an integral part of a person's mental health and photoshopping people doesn't do anything other than add to that continuous cycle of insecurity. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about this, because even without Photoshop, insecurities will always exist, just as even without social media, business well practices will always exist. And that's why I'm speaking to you today, because as the consumers of media, products, and services, you all have the ability to leverage your power over corporations using digital consciousness. Don't trust businesses and be an informed consumer. A common source of market failure is consumer ignorance, and since brand image is such an important factor in purchasing decisions nowadays, you as a consumer are the best people who keep companies and advertisers in check. Don't trust other people. Remember that influencers are not your friend, they're a business. And like all businesses, there's a team of people behind them to create that marketable image. They don't always have your best intentions, and even if they try to be ethical, they may have contracts that bind them to do otherwise. And lastly, don't trust your own perceptions. Remember that social media only shows the highlights in people's lives. Everyone has moments, good and bad, that you don't see behind the beautiful profiles and photos. Remember that effective marketing uses psychology to manipulate the way you think, and you are worth more than just a number on someone's screen. It's our responsibility to leverage the power consumers have, and it's our responsibility to design a digital culture that reflects the real world we live in. My name is Eunice Wu. Thank you for listening.